Welcome to TechZilla Bytes, feeding your tech hunger fast. I'm Patrick Norton, and last week, Game Developers Conference, big news, DirectX. You know what else is big news? OpenGL and what's going on right now with the DirectX 11 that fuels your PC gaming experience and, of course, the Xbox One. Joining us now to talk about what's going on right now and in the future of graphics performance for gaming, Mr. Ryan Trout, PCPer.com, the man, the myth, the legend. How are you, sir? I'm doing pretty well, thanks. I, I would just wanted to thank you for interrupting your golfing adventure. <laughs> to, to join us to talk about this. And I'm a little heartbroken. I expected like a Tam O'Shanter and like Knickerbockers, but you look very chill for a golfer these days. Yeah, maybe next time. Next time <laughs> I'll dress up for you. So let's talk about what was the bigger news? OpenGL, so it's kind of funny, right? The, the, a few weeks ago, we hear that, that Microsoft's going to drop DirectX 12, possibly or directly as a response to AMD's mantle, their attempt to create an API that allows you know, closer access to the GPU. And then at the DirectX, uh, excuse me, at the Game Developers Conference, um, AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel all get together to talk about the new OpenGL spec, which could deliver like seven to 15 times the performance of current OpenGL implementations. Which one's more exciting for you? They're all interesting. It's it's the OpenGL stuff was more of a surprise than anything else to us, right? So OpenGL is interesting because it's an open source platform. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody can write extensions for it. Anybody can write modules for it. And that's you know the the talks about OpenGL were more on here's what you can do with the existing technology today, and that's actually kind of interesting mm -hmm. in and of itself, right? It doesn't require uh, new hardware. It doesn't require massive new iterations of OpenGL. It says, take these extensions, here's how you implement them. You can improve CPU efficiency and thus overall performance in many cases. And that, that, that makes me suddenly, all of a sudden, I'm excited about Valve Steambox again, or the Steam operating system. This is suddenly, like, wait a minute, OpenGL is going to have decent GPU performance. They're going to speed it up. That's kind of exciting. It's DirectX kind of. 12, AMD Mantle, and the OpenGL kind of changes that we're talking about uh -huh. uh, are all really focused on improving CPU efficiency, which uh -oh. is interesting, to improve GPU performance. So this is basically, you know, there's a, there's a chart we were, we were looking at on PCPer.com, and CPU performance has gone like this over the last decade. GPU performance has gone like this. It's skyrocketed by comparison. So all they're trying to do is make, you know, kind of communications, for lack of a better word, between the GPU and the CPU work better so the CPU can feed the GPU faster? Yeah, more or less. So the, any time that there is a place where the processor can be hindered by how many times it can, say, instance a, an object in order for the GPU to actually render it, right? Mm -hmm. So there are places, even though we talk about games today not being CPU limited, there are instances where in the engine itself is CPU limited. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a developer uh, that we saw at one of the talks talking about like there are literally game types that have not been able to be created yet because developers knew about these limitations, right? So we're talking about games where massive armies that have individual uh, instancing, individual control, individual AI, you know, some of these types of things that maybe we've never even thought of could be created once we kind of get API overhead out of the way. And that takes, for DirectX 12, they were talking about entirely different ways of processing information or packaging it for the CPU. Yeah, it's it, it gets into, it, in reality, a lot more stuff than than I can really can get into. Like the <laughs> the, the the programming models of it are a little bit beyond me as well. But you know, it, it's important to to listen to what the the main developers are out there saying. People that, f that build the Frostbite engine, people mm -hmm. that are you know Crytek announced support for Mantle. These guys are really excited about their capability to improve games on different levels that I would have never really imagined just by kind of eliminating much of the CPU bottleneck. So as we're looking forward, uh, DirectX 12 not going to hit for 18 months, essentially 2015. Mantle now slowly picking up speed and adding more developers. Where does that leave OpenGL? Is it all about the Steam box or is it or in, in, in mobile devices? OpenGL is still very relevant. I think it will actually become more relevant, right? So as the Steam machine and Steam OS becomes more popular, that will help. But you got to remember, Android runs OpenGL, and so does Mac, and so does Linux, right? Mm -hmm. So all of these platforms will help increase it. Uh, and also PlayStation 4 is also in that mix. And on the DirectX side, you've got Windows, you've got uh, Windows Phone, and then you have the Xbox One, of course. So it, it kind of puts um, Mantle in this odd place as well. Mm -hmm. it, has a, it has the smallest uh, addressable market 
of GPUs, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't have any consoles. Mantle is not on a console. Mantle isn't on Linux yet. It's not on any of those types of things. So um, it, it's still interesting with this window of time how many more developers will integrate Mantle support, will release games with Mantle uh, versions of their engine. And I think that will really hinder or advance AMD in the PC market share. It was interesting. You had a chance to sit down with NVIDIA at, at the Game Developers Conference, and, and they didn't quite want to address Mantle. Mostly they said, why would you fractionate the market more? Why would you split more of your market away? Why don't you wait for DirectX 12 and let Microsoft do the heavy lifting of, of, of dropping things down or getting the API closer to the GPU? Yeah, it's, you know, uh, since Mantle's release, a lot of people in the both the press and, and the enthusiast community were like, hey, how come NVIDIA, how come you didn't think of this? How right. come you didn't go out on and, and develop this, this separate API? And in reality, they've done that for other cases, right? Remember CUDA was kind of the first GPU compute right. language, and they released it. They did all that before OpenCL was really standardized, before DirectX Compute was really uh, standardized. And, and they got some feedback, some negative feedback from it initially, but because of its release, NVIDIA GPUs are pretty much the dominant player in GPU compute today as it stands. Um, when they were talking to us at GDC, they were, you know, they were very much kind of going down the opposite path. They said, uh, this is an instance where we think an industry standard is the best way to go. Uh, and we also believe that, or NVIDIA believes rather, that there is a lot of tweaks that we can make to how DirectX 11 is implemented at the driver level to actually improve scalability and performance and efficiency of DX11 while we wait for DX12 over the next 18 months. Because obviously NVIDIA as a company is kind of worried that the, the advantage that AMD, <laughs> yeah, that if, if Mantle takes off, the next 18 months could be very hard for NVIDIA while they wait for Microsoft to release it. Once they release it, I think everybody is on level playing field again. Uh, but it really comes down to what develop, how many developers are willing to invest in the time and effort mm -hmm. to develop on Mantle, knowing that AMD is still second place in terms of PC market share. And it's it's kind of it's it's funny like the Nvidia would be out here trumpeting the wait for DirectX 12. And this is also the company that wants you to buy a new G-Sync compatible monitor so you can run G-Sync and eliminate some of the traditional artifacts from your gaming experience by buying an Nvidia graphics card and a special compatible uh, monitor. <laughs> Yes, there are uh, double standards both sides of the fence here, for sure. Quick change of speed before before we cut you loose and get back to the golfing. Um, did you get a chance to try on Sony's Morpheus virtual headset, and did you get a chance to try on the Oculus Rift uh, Dev Kit 2? I did not try the Sony. Apparently, you had to get tickets for that, uh, <laughs> and I wasn't aware until too late in the week. I did try the new Oculus. Uh, it is much better. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's kind of a, I, I saw it at CES, so it's not much different from what we saw there. Uh, but I did that day at GDC order one of the new dev kits uh, for our office as well. It's it's improved. The the latency is better. The resolution is much better. Um, I, I will say that the, the lights and the kind of coolness factor that the Sony system had with kind of Tron-like uh, <laughs> accents on it made it look more interesting. I don't know if it looked better, but it definitely looked more interesting from an observer not wearing the goggles. <laughs> Bright, shiny lights wrapped around yeah. your head. PCPro.com is a website to find more of your work, Ryan. Any exciting stories you can tease this week? Great roundup, by the way, last week of the 750 Ti uh, overclocked cards. What's coming up next? Is there a new graphics card this week? Uh, there will be a new graphics card this week, although it will probably be on the professional and not on the consumer side. Uh, NVIDIA has some updates. This week is the NVIDIA GPU Technology Conference, so mm -hmm. it's kind of their version of like the Intel Developer Forum. So there will probably be some interesting announcements made uh, at that. And then we have uh, at least two new SSDs launching Ooh. this week as well. So Alan's doing some testing on those. Ryan Trout, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, PCPer.com is where you can find Ryan's work. And of course, those SSD reviews and some of the announcements from NVIDIA he was teasing earlier. I want to thank you for watching this episode of TechZilla Bytes, which reminds me, lynda.com slash TechZilla. If you're interested in mobile programming, we talked about Android development. Um, we talked about some of the platforms that actually use OpenGL rather than DirectX. Want to learn more about Java programming, mobile programming, check out our sponsor, lynda.com slash techzilla. Amazing video tutorials that will help you get the skills you need for your next career in life or to update the skills you have already. Hey, Techzilla Bytes, I'm Patrick Norton. Thank you so much for watching. You can find more of our videos at youtube.com slash techzilla. Comment down below if you're on YouTube. Tweet at Tech
Techzilla. And of course, you can subscribe on any platform you want to at techzilla.com.